Hello. Hi everyone. I don't know if this is going to happen because everybody's freaking out all of a sudden. Children. Children are freaking out. So I bought some stuff from ColourPop. I haven't been buying much makeup, but uh, there were a lot of good sales and there were some new products out. And I always hope that one day I'm going to find a tinted moisturizer I can use that I like. So um, I decided to give the ColourPop one a try. I wanted to try their new concealer too because their matte concealer is like terrible, <laughs> terrible on my skin. It's just too dry. And the ones I have are pretty old and they separate, so... <clears throat> Anyway, so they have this pretty fresh hyaluronic creamy concealer. So I'm hoping this wears better on my skin. Um, I got the Fair 2W shade in the pretty fresh hyaluronic acid tinted moisturizer and the shade Fair 05W in the concealer. I also got a matte super shock shadow because I really enjoy matte super shock shadows. <laughs> Um, this, it feels like it might be kind of similar to this one I have, which is as if, which was limited edition. And I kind of wonder if this is the same color. <laughs> this one is old, so it kind of needs to be tossed anyway. And the other thing I got was this jaded palette. So jaded palette, one of a, a collab with Kathleen Lights, one of her many, many collaborations. I don't follow basically anybody that really covers ColourPop. I don't follow ColourPop, ColourPop itself, so I didn't really know much of anything about anything. So I just, this was a really good price, really pretty colors. Um, I haven't been too interested in buying eyeshadows, which is a good thing because I have a lot of them. Um, but I felt like this was a really nicely varied palette and 30% off or whatever, it was a really good price. So, um, oh, I also did pick up this brush roll. It was $35 for all of these brushes, which to buy their brushes individually is, they're very affordable, but if you were to buy this many brushes, it would be very expensive. So um, I don't really buy brushes ever anymore, so it was a little bit strange, but the price was so good that I decided I thought I'd try it out because I was curious how, I have an um, eyeliner brush from them and I think it's the same as this one which I really like for eyebrows and I was really curious how some of these like mainly the eye brushes is what I was interested in so I guess I'm gonna try those out as well so I need to prime my eyes with something I think I'm gonna just use my regular old essence I love color intensifying base um All right, I thought I'd just do some swatches because, you know, I know a lot of people would really like to see swatches of this. Uh, ColourPop, uh, what is that thing called? No Filter Sticks in Fair 05, ColourPop No Filter Foundation in Fair 05, and the Pretty Fresh ColourPop Tinted Moisturizer in Fair 05. So they're all yellow undertone. This one is like the darkest. You can see there's quite a bit of a difference as far as pigmentation goes in not surprisingly, the tinted moisturizer versus the foundation. This is the Pretty Fresh uh, Concealer in Fair 05. Wait, no, this is not Fair 05. That has a different shade name. It's Fair 2W. There is a one, like a one N maybe, um, but yellow is better for me, so I decided to get the yellow. ColourPop Pretty Fresh Concealer in Fair 05. Um, I would say it looks maybe a tiny bit darker than the foundation. Um, I think this color is good for me. This is Fair 02 and Fair 06 in the matte, no filter matte concealers. Um, this one's a little more of a corrector shade, but I can use it under my eyes. Fair 02 is just way too light for what I prefer to do. Everybody's freaking out downstairs. I apologize. Um, this is the Clinique uh, Even Better Foundation. I tried to fix things with, that were a little bit different or a little bit more glowy. Clinique Even Better in the lightest shade, um, Shell CN 0.5. And this is the Milani, what do they call this thing? Conceal and Perfect Foundation Stick in 200 Porcelain, which I feel like works well on my face. 
and this is the Anastasia Luminous Foundation in 100N. All of these like foundation colors, I can wear the foundation sticks a little bit darker than, um, you know, the liquid. I feel like it works. I can wear a pretty wide range. Um, I don't wear full heavy coverage, so whatever. All of these I can wear. You can see there's a pretty big difference in shade variants, and um, I think they're all fine. I just don't like something as light as the Ferro Zero Two. I think I might do this Amatrine um, in the crease and then whatever it was that swatched so nicely, I think Smoky Quartz on the lid. I'm going to go really simple and I am going to use these brushes. <laughs> Reminder to myself, use the brushes, Nicole. Maybe I'll just put down this kind of matte cream shade, My Precious, first um, with a bigger brush just so it'll be easier to blend. And this is the E15. just so it's not too tacky of a base. That is gonna be a little bit darker than my skin tone, but that's okay. I'm just gonna go over it with something else. I was hoping that they would have something shaped a little bit more like a 217, but I don't really see that kind of shape in this set. Um, you know, I have Sigma brushes that are really dupes for 217s, um, but I would like to have some synthetic ones without buying Sigma's new synthetic ones. It's just the 270 shape is just so versatile. All right, so that does kind of like drag a little the way some synthetic brushes do. I'm gonna go in with this E16 now and that Amatrine. It looks like a matte with some glitter and I'm assuming once I put that in my crease, you're not really gonna see a lot of glitter. It's just gonna show up like a matte since that's usually how those shades go. Though it does kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It's like it kind of catches a little bit on your skin. I've noticed a lot of synthetic, um, like fluffy brushes do this, fluffy eye brushes. but it's still applying really nicely. It just feels like it's kind of skipping and dragging. Oh, did a little more color on one side than the other. E3 flat shader brush to apply the Smoky Quartz shade. Oh, it picked up really nicely. Ooh, yeah, this reminds me of Snake Eyes from ColourPop. I wonder if it's the same shade. That's applying really nicely with this brush. That's nice. Sometimes really, really metallic shades like this do not pick up nicely with brushes. They don't transfer nicely and it's just easier to use your finger to apply them. But it, it sure is less messy and a little more accurate when you use a brush. I feel like that's a lot shinier on this side than on this side. I'm just going with my finger. Sometimes these super pigmented shades, if you do your finger, it just puts too much product on. And then it looks kind of scaly if you have looser eyelid skin. I'm kind of curious about putting that little diamond color pop over the top because that has a little glitter in it. Just, oh, that's pretty. Hoo -hoo. Did I just say diamond color pop? I meant diamond super shock. All right, I gotta deal with the baby. He's very upset. He's about to get really upset. Okay, we'll see if I can come back to this. Okay, apologies for the whining baby in the background there for a little bit. He's downstairs. Hopefully I can just finish this up. So um, I think I'm just gonna tight line with an eyeliner real quick. I'm gonna save the eyeliner um, brush until I do my eyebrows. The best time to do this is before eyeshadow, but I uh, often forget. And always, uh, one of my biggest tips for tight lining is um, just avoid putting the brush or the pencil where your pupil is. So try to look the other way. I found that my eye flinches way more if. Um, the brush is where my pupil is and that tends to be when I do that like big jerky blink 
is because I've gotten too close to my pupil. And now I think I'm gonna use the tinted moisturizer. So when I swatched it on my hands, it seemed like something that maybe I could apply with my fingers. Not many things work that well for me that way. I can just swatch on my hand in a way that seemed, my hands tend to be really dry. So that can be kind of a good test of what might be usable by applying with fingers. But you never know, because sometimes things just settle really weirdly. when they get on the face. So you can probably see the flakiness around here, here. Like borderline cases where I'm right on the edge of just grabbing it and trying again with something more moisturizing underneath. All right, so what I put on was the Milani Prime and Protect SPF 30. Um, I put a lot of it on like I would a regular moisturizer with SPF. It's not great for longevity in my experience, but it tends to be a really nice surface for makeup to sit on top of, especially if I have something that's kind of clinging to dry flakes. This seems to make it cling to dry flakes less. So I'm going to try this again, and we'll see. I guess we can zoom in a little bit so we can see what's happening when I put it on my face, though I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to focus on me with that enticing uh, bedspread in the background there. Okay, so that's what it comes out. It looks pretty yellow when you pump it out and like I keep shaking it. It's kind of like a, feels like one of those kind of gel um, formulas where it's kind of like a, a jelly almost. Kind of like um, the old um, Makeup Forever uh, face and body. I don't remember if the water one is like that now. So my chin is such a problem area. I'm trying to do more patting as opposed to dragging. Some formulas just show up better. I've noticed when you pull them um, and some just like that just shows all the flakes on my skin. And it could be too that I'm trying to get the tinted moisturizer to do more than it really wants to do and like it doesn't sit well on top of itself. And I also get the feeling that's one that like, you can't let it sit on your hands for too long because it's just gonna like dry out and like soak into your hands kinda. You know, like face and body has that like film forming stuff where you start moving it around and all of a sudden it gets like really tacky and grippy and you get more coverage with it. And I kind of wonder if this is a similar kind of formula. I find those kind of formulas kind of tricky to work with. Because they never sit very well on my face. And like stuff doesn't take to smearing around on my face very well because it clings to like pores and dry patches. And I don't know why tinted moisturizers just do not like my face. Then again, most foundation doesn't like my face either, so I guess that's not really saying much. I'm pretty sticky, which I kind of expect, so I am gonna end up setting it and then it's gonna end up looking like a foundation anyway. But I'm gonna try to just let it sit for a little bit and see how it does. Um, I do have the concealer as well. So this I think is gonna have a lot more coverage. So I'm going to try to go really sheer under my eyes. And the shade again is Fair 05W. I'm gonna to put a few dots. I did notice some kind of glittery fallout um, from probably the shadow, the pressed shadow that I put on, Smoky Quartz. Nothing terrible, just kind of some sparkly sparkly situation under the eyes there. My under eyes are pretty dry and um, tend to be kind of flaky, so I do have a hard time getting concealers to look very nice. So, 
hopefully this is one that works a little bit better with my skin. And I might try a little bit of the concealer up on the um, blemish I've got up there just to see how it does. And a little bit more in the corners here where I never get products because <sighs> it's like this deep cavern. It's like, how do you even get stuff up there without it ending up like in <laughs> my eyeshadow? That looks pretty good. All things being equal. I think once I powder this, I'm gonna see more issues with the tinted moisturizer because it definitely does not look great and it's kind of being hidden by the fact that my skin looks so glowy. But I cannot deal with sticky, sticky face. So, uh, you know, like I said, I'm gonna give it a few minutes, but if it does not set down, I'm setting it. I would love to not set my under eyes, but that seems extremely unlikely to be successful. So I am, I think I'm gonna put some of the Sonia Kashuk um, Chic Luminosity Powder, which is long since discontinued, but uh, it is basically a dupe for the NARS Light Reflecting Setting Powder Pressed, which I also love. I just, I'm trying to use this up which, you know, I'm getting there. Just remembered I was gonna use the ColourPop. <laughs> what is this thing called? Brush? To do my um, dip brow, eyebrows. So, E6, I think this is the one that I purchased the same brush number, I think, that I purchased in the past that I do like for my eyebrows. Um, and it's in my little brush set that I keep downstairs. So we'll see how it goes. This is medium brown, I believe, in the Anastasia Dip Brow. The brush I tend to use upstairs is fine, but it's not very stiff. So I'm like constantly having to go in and trying to like load up the bristles and get them in a little pointy shape and um, it just gets out of shape from what I want for doing eyebrows really quickly. And something a little stiffer seems to be able to hold that shape a little bit better. And uh, so far I would say this is definitely easier than the brush I usually use. Oops. I just went into my eyeliner instead of the dip brow. Whoops. But I feel like this is not keeping a very sharp shape, which is kind of a bummer but it's also less floppy than the other one. So I do, I do think this will be what I use upstairs now to my fault for not loading up the brush again before going in here at the front, which is the only place I really try to get kind of thin, distinct um, brow strokes because I don't have a lot of brow hairs up in the front. So I'm trying to kind of fake some little hairs in that area a little bit more specifically. I should do a little bit of um, lower lash eyeshadow. Let me grab another brush from the set. And I'm just going to, I think, do that kind of purpley shade on my lower lashes or lower lash line that I did in the crease. And maybe I'll try this little wee one. It's kind of like a Mac... What color? I don't remember which one. I have a little itty bitty Mac one that um, Nikki Tutorials used to use a lot. Kind of reminds me of that, but less dense, less brush hairs. It's an E20. Just hurry up, Nicole. Seriously, are you are you focusing on the bed back there? Come on, come on. Work with me here. Camera. Who do you think paid for you? It was not the bed. It was me. Look at me. Yeah, I kind of need to clean up the edges over there. I feel like this is transferring really nicely. Oh, brush in the eyeball, not great.
softer than that MAC brush, which I always found a little pokey for trying to blend. Hmm, getting some minor creasing up there. I'm gonna use this E17 and I guess the that same shade just to try to soften up the edges maybe. This probably was not a great choice. I should have just gone in with this brush bare, but so it goes. Might put a little bit more here so it looks a little bit more intentional since I already got product up in there. And I have a lot of like blue, purpley tones from veins and whatnot in there. I'm gonna do mascara. This is the Milani Highly Rated Mascara. It came in this set from Target. Uh, this was $15, I believe. And I got a discount on it, so it ended up being quite a good deal. Um, Cause that's a lot of tubes of mascara. Not all of them are full size, but I think several of them were, so I felt like it was a good value. <clears throat> Under lower lash line, cover girl, clump crusher, water resistant per usual. We really don't need to watch this. This is, uh, I think, long discontinued. It's a Stila uh, Aqua Glow Watercolor Blush in Rose Water. If you happen to see one, they are lovely, lovely. Kind of weird, but beautiful blushes. Kind of weird because they have like this little net and whatever. They're very liquidy. Um, you have to shake them up a bunch, but they're so pretty. I guess I could use a loose powder and the gigantic fluffy brush that came in this set. I mean, gigantic. Um, I use uh, these Guerlain meteorites that I crushed up. <laughs> Not very well. There's still some pretty big chunks in there. The thing I like about the Guerlain is that there's a fair amount of shimmer in it. So if I have like a glowy finish of the foundation, it's not gonna completely take that away. Oh my God, that brush is so huge. Okay, my little battery light is blinking. So I think I'm going to finish this up for right now. Maybe I'll try to get some swatches in a minute. Um, I'm just gonna use a tinted balm. This is the Fresh Sugar uh, Tinted Balm in Honey. Yes, because this is a fairly natural color for me. If I don't put too much on. I think I can get a thumbnail before I run out of power. So I think that's it for this video. It was gonna be just kind of like a show and tell demo haul type thing, but I decided to do swatches and I guess now it's kind of like a more useful video for people out there. Let me know if you have any questions, if you've tried out this formula, if you have any tips on applying it or the kind of products it likes to sit better on top of, like if you've had good luck with just regular moisturizer or like a silicone based primer, something slippy, kind of like the uh, Smashbox photo finish. Is that what that stuff is called? The, you know, the silicone type primer. Um, that's what I'm going to try next probably since I've been having a lot of luck with those kind of silicone primers like the Murad Invisibler. Uh, Paula's Choice also has some primer serum type thing that's also heavy on the silicones. I'm finding in general that lately with my skin being pretty dry, foundation is actually blending pretty nicely on top of that where, um, and when it wears away, it just kind of fades off as opposed to going all patchy. So for whatever that's worth. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, yeah, and if you have any tips on getting this stuff to apply more nicely, if you're using brushes or fingers or sponges, I have not read anything about it. I have not seen anything about it. I'm very out of touch with things. I just bought some stuff and slapped it on my face. So I hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much for, so much for watching and um, you know, subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. I really don't know what my, uh, YouTube output is going to be like. It's kind of like when I get inspiration, I'm making a video, but I'm not committing to any sort of schedule. If it turns out to be once a week, that's nice. If not, that's okay too. So I will see you when I see you. Hope you're having a great day. <laughs>